Okay. Normally, I would never do two Prager U segments in a row, but I saw that I haven't paid attention to them in a while, and I saw this. It's time to grow up. Okay? It's time to grow up. And that's what we need right now. Okay? We need to focus. We need to mature. Okay? And there is nothing more equipped to provide us that stimulus and growth than Prager University. Nothing. All right, keep it together. Oh, by the way, I checked. I didn't watch the video, of course. I never watch videos before I watch them with you, unless I say so. Um, but I did take a look at the comment section, and I saw the weirdest thing. Look, it's right, it's right near the top. Is it still there? Yeah, here we go. Look, everyone wants to believe they're chosen, but if we all waited around for a prophecy to make us special, we'd die waiting, and that's why you need to choose yourself. Eda Clawthorn, the Owl House. And this is funny to me for two reasons. First of all, quoting a children's cartoon in the comment section underneath a video telling people to grow up is very funny. Second of all, the idea of a PragerU fan uh, quoting the Owl House is fucking hilarious because the Owl House is uh, aggressively gay. It is aggressively homosexual. Um, and uh, it's, it's just really weird. I just want to know, like, hold on. Spoilers, by the way. Turn away if you care. Like, the finale of the first season was the protagonist in a tuxedo and a tutu dancing with a girl to defeat a monster. Like that. So I'm just, I'm wondering what the demographic is where they're watching... Where they're wa yeah, where they're watching the Owl House, but then they're getting their advice from Prager University. You know, I'm I'm just I, I I genuinely don't know. But whatever the case may be, whatever the case may be. All right, hit me up, Prager University. We all know it takes a long time to grow up, not only biologically but psychologically. There's a saying among psychiatrists that it takes 50 years to overcome the first 20. What? Here's the good news. Unlike other species, we are not restrained by our instincts alone. What? We are able to learn from our parents. Wait, you, you, can, you can train other animals. Okay, hold on. Where are we going? Parents, our experiences, and our culture. Okay. Here's the bad news. Uh -oh. Nobody matures without effort. Tours. It doesn't happen naturally. It takes a lot of hard work. But what does it mean to be mature? Good Qu question. Okay. I thought it was just the one time. Don't. Nobody does that accidentally, okay? Why is he saying it like that? Nobody does that accidentally. If you want to pronounce the T, you can go like mature. Like mature, you know? Rather than mature, but mature? Okay, all right, okay. This is the last I'll say of it. Question. So let's answer it. I have identified five characteristics of maturity. If you work to possess them all, you will have a happier, deeper, and more productive life. Okay. One, taking control. All right. Of course you had no choice what era you were born in, or where you were born, or who your parents are. But with each year of childhood, you attain more and more capacity to chart your own course. Yes, society and fate play a role, but cultivating your ability and willingness to- All right, I see where we're going with this one, okay? Take control. Is there anything inherently wrong with uh, exercising agency over your own life and expressing uh, your individual will? Absolutely not. Uh, however, this plays in pretty hard to the bootstraps myth. Uh, hold on, what's this guy's name? I just gotta know. Hold on. What's this guy? Not only the logic. Give me the name. Oh, it takes a long time to grow up. Not only biologically, but a lot of... Stephen Marmer. Let's do it. This guy? This guy has nine reviews on health grade. Rated 1.9. Wait, can I see the reviews on this guy? Dr. Marmer treated our son for bipolar disorder, but did very little to evaluate him and even nodded off twice during the sessions. Marmer did not listen when we shared the treatment was not improving our son. 
and assured me that he was a little bit better each visit. Thankfully, we were able to get a new psychiatrist. <laughs> what I learned is family and friends seeking assistance. Dr. Marmer provides zero evaluations and allows unqualified and competent persons to manage his, uh, his client's care. It's taken me two years to write this review because the experience was so devastating. Holy shit! What the fuck? Jesus Christ. My son was a PT for eight years, suffering with depression. In the last video, he was very depressed through all his faults, basically threw his hands in the air and blamed my son for his problems. Oh, interesting. A guy who goes on PragerU to talk about the importance of taking control will tell patients that they're at fault for their own problems. My son walked out. Doctor told me he would call me with suggestions for inpatient treatment. He never, uh, we never heard from him again. In the last two years, we found meds and support. Nice. Well, I'm glad that worked well. Dr. Marmer is quite possibly the wisest, most empathetic person I've ever met. His capacity for understanding another person's internal world is unparalleled. Dr. Marmer has transformed many lives, including my own. I consider it a privilege to have crossed paths with him. Interesting. I notice this one doesn't actually mention a specific uh, treatment. Same with this one. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I can't, I mean, I can't evaluate from, from these reviews much of anything. February 2nd, January 23rd, March 21st, 2019. These could all be fake reviews, but I don't know, dude. It's a little weird. Whew. Okay. Read his bio. Wait, does his bio say something funny? About me. This shit ass website's not letting me click the about me. Fucking doctors. Of hard work. But what does it mean to be mature? Uh. Good question. So let's answer it. I have identified five characteristics oh, of right. maturity. We did this. Own decisions expands your ability to influence how your life unfolds. The only way to achieve maturity is to take charge of your life. Nothing empowers you as much as exercising that control. Okay. Refusing to act, waiting to be rescued, and seeing yourself as a victim are sure signs of immaturity. Yeah, again, again, this is this is exactly what I mean. This is how you abuse psychiatric advice to push a political agenda listen to this control refusing to act refusing to act i don't know that's very very vague waiting to be rescued and seeing yourself as a victim are look at this seeing yourself as a victim literally like a guy with a justice sign so it's a sign of immaturity to be a civil rights protester that's literally what he's saying here literally it's a sign of a guy saying uh, 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 justice, this means you're immature. Literally, like, oh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? Ah, oh, you know, he could have could have bootstrapped this. So what, what are you talking about? You think you're a victim? What? The problem is, and this is always the logic of these people, it never accounts for the possibility that you actually are a victim. Mind you, conservatives will cry. They will sob over everything. The war on Christmas. Conservatives, it's, they're taken away. I got told happy holidays at a Target while I was buying my fucking underwear. They'll cry about anything. The war on white people. They're trying to open up a homeless shelter eight miles away from my suburb. They'll cry about everything. But then, hey dude, you're pretty immature. If you see yourself as a victim, to be honest. They'll never apply this logic to themselves, by the way. You will never find a PragerU fan go up to somebody complaining about how BLM hates white people and tell them they're being immature. You will never find them do that. Ever. They will never do it. Ever. It's a one-way political hit.
And none of this, by the way, is good psychiatric advice. And by the way, I'll be, I'll go even harder. I think that doing shit like this should get you disbarred. If you're a fucking psychiatrist and you're twisting the meaning of psychiatric advice to try and fit a, a far right agenda to try to delegitimize the legitimacy of, um, of, um, uh, civil rights protests or of like activism as a concept funny that things make you immature include not doing anything and protesting i think this i think that this should get very uh, uh very heavily scrutinized i think um uh, uh uh by the um uh by whatever um uh, uh organization licensed him are sure signs of immaturity Tourity. two Taking responsibility. Yeah, we're gonna do it again. I mean this in two ways. The first way is simply to acknowledge that you're responsible for what you do. Okay. If you make a mistake, acknowledge it. Okay. Don't alibi and don't blame others. Okay. This is an easy thing to say, but we all know it's very hard to do. A mature person does it. A mature person takes responsibility. Second, is the willingness to take on obligations and fulfill them. Okay. For example, I got married and took on obligations to my wife and children. Okay. I have ethical obligations to my patients and my profession. Which you, which you no doubt adhere to with, uh, uh, with, with frightening uh, consistency. Even on days that I might not feel like it. A mature person doesn't see obligations as burdens, but as something he willingly accepts and sees through to fulfillment. See, that's the key there. Willingly accepts. I'd be willing to bet a lot of the things people call burdens are not things they willingly accepted. A lot of the stuff people complain about are not, uh, 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 um, you know, sacrifices they have taken upon themselves consensually, um, but are rather things that life has hoisted upon them. Three. Containing emotions. Oh boy. I would never suggest that you should ignore your emotions, but you have to learn to contain them. By the way, if a, I, uh, listen, okay, I'm not a psychi psychologist or psychiatrist. I feel like if I was ever told this by a therapist, you need to learn to contain your emotions. I feel like I, the, like I immediately know I'm talking. The actual psychologist has been murdered and this person is wearing their skin and I am going to die next. Um... Now, there's a difference between control your emotions and contain your emotions. Three, containing emotions. Controlling emotions is a good thing. That's good. Control them. You should control. Self-control. Nice. Containing emotions sounds like bottling it up, which is, I'm sure, I'm, by the way, I've done some math on this, uh, pretty much the number one reason why men kill themselves. I'm a med student. What he just said is fucking insane for a psychiatrist to say. Yeah, that's yeah. I would I could never imagine um, a psychiatrist ever fucking saying this. I mean, we're on PragerU, so this guy clearly doesn't give a shit about any of his ethical obligations. I would never suggest that you should ignore your emotions, but you have to learn to contain them. What does that mean? Immature people lash out at their boss or their coworker. Ah, something there we go. Mmm, the first one we get thrown. Immature people lash out at their boss. What the fuck does that have to do with containing emotions? Like, think of all of the examples that you could have conceivably evoked for containing emotions. And the first one you come up with is, hey, hey, don't don't talk shit at your bosses. What, a, what an interesting... Wow, I would have thought about, like, talking back at your parents or like a relationship or something but no it's, spe it's specifically the boss is the first one we get doesn't go their way or argue with their spouse when they come home or turn to alcohol or drugs because of a rough day wait people use alcohol and drugs to help contain their feelings wait what how are we on the contain your feelings section people literally use these substances to suppress their emotions Wait, wait, what? Pe people getting addicted to substances is them not containing their emotions? What are we what are we on about right now? I often tell my patients that maturity can be measured by how much anxiety they can tolerate without acting out inappropriately. Holy shit. No, I take it back. This guy absolutely should have his license revoked. Are you fucking kidding me? She, are you, are, are you fucking kidding me? Is this for real? Is this happening right now? 
how much anxiety you can tolerate without acting out inappropriately. Inappro First of all, I don't think you would ever use the term inappropriately in this context. Second of all, how much you can tolerate anxiety. What are we talking about? So people with clinical anxiety are just fundamentally less mature? So people who take extra steps during their day to try to lessen their levels of anxiety because they can't tolerate as much, that's a sign of immaturity? So people who go out of their way to lessen the stress in their life because they know they're not very good at handling stress, that means immaturity. That's an immature type of behavior. No, no fucking wonder this guy got 1.9 stars, dude. Holy shit. I'm a nursing student. This guy is far, far, far out of line. I would refuse to work for him or refer patients to him. Yeah, this is insane. I didn't think... I, 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 I watched this. I assumed it would just be some stupid Jordan Peterson light advice, but this is like genuinely uh, uh, grounds for license revocation. And in any just world, by the way. Appropriately uh. against themselves or others. Mature people express their emotions in the right place, at the right time, in the right way. Okay, but that's, that's not necessarily wrong. No, thank you, 21st Century Socialist. I'm rambling on my own. That's not necessarily incorrect. The problem is, what are the right places, times, and ways? And this is controlling your emotions, not containing them. Again, controlling your emotions are great. If you are feeling one way or the other, I think it is a sign of maturity to be able to manage your behavior. Listen, folks. This is important, okay? You can't control how you feel, for the most part. I mean, you can do, like, cognitive behavioral therapy. There's shit you can do, but for the most part, you feel what you feel. You can control how you act. Simple as that. You always have control over you act. You very rarely have control over how you feel. So don't worry about your feelings. Worry about what you can do with them. Yes, CBT. It's real. Cognitive behavioral therapy. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Danny Fallon. Vosh, I'm a behavioral psychologist. This line of thinking is way too terribly common amongst many older psychiatrists. It's actually kind of fucking weird. I've worked with far too many of them in the field. Yeah, dude. I've noticed that there are a lot of... I've Because I've heard other people say this. There are a lot of people in the medical industry. A lot of, like, old people. Not just psychiatry, but also, like, traditional medicine. Not traditional medicine, like... Acupuncture. I mean, you know what I mean. Regular doctors. Yeah. Um, and they're fucking terrible because they were all educated back in the fucking 1960s where they were all told that a slap on the ass is like a morphine shot and that black people have higher pain tolerance so they don't need as many uh, painkillers, you know? They, they, um, uh, uh, they were given like really bad education back during an era where there were not the same standards for professional care and a lot of that carries over. How is cock and ball torture a good coping strategy? Listen, I will get into that in another segment. We are emotional beings, but we should never let go of the steering wheel. That is, we need to learn how- Okay, but you know what they call that? They call that controlling the steering wheel, not containing the steering wheel. Notice that? Notice that important difference there? Nobody says you contain the steering wheel with your hands. You control it and when to contain our emotions. Four, having perspective. An immature teenager will regard a pimple as a catastrophic eruption of Mount Vesuvius or will regard rejection by a girlfriend or boyfriend as the end of the world. Hey, we got it. Uh, girlfriend or boyfriend, we... Oh, wait, I guess it's gender neutral in the narration, so it's not gay. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Maturity comes oh. from putting disappointments into perspective. The reason we forgive a teenager's overreaction is because we understand it's probably the first time it's happened. But life's disappointments don't stop when you turn 21. F that is true. Um, I kind of agree with this. Being able to, um, being able to contextualize things that are upsetting you is really important. Here's a really interesting thing that I learned. Are you ready for it? Okay. So, have you guys ever noticed this? Have you ever noticed that, like, um, have you ever been in a car accident, like a really bad car accident, and after you get out and you're okay, um, and nobody's hurt, you feel this, a sense of calm, or like a sense of, um, a sense of, like, dutiful responsibility to fulfill what you need to do? 
maybe with another severe thing, like a really bad thing that happened to you, like uh, something kicked in and there was a coping mechanism uh, that worked for you. Whereas, if you're having a bowl of spaghetti and you trip and you spill spaghetti all over the floor and carpet, this is a life-ending emergency. You, you, like, you, you, you trip and you spill the spaghetti and you look down and you, you reach for the knife and you slit your, you slit your wrists. Okay? What's interesting is the human body has copium fail-safes in our thyroid gland that kick in in severe tragedy. We have like a little, we have like a little node for it, you know? In, in cases of severe tragedy, if something really bad happens, it kicks in. If somebody passes away, if there's a great injury or damage to your property or any of this stuff, um, there is often the potential uh, for, um, for, for copium activation, which is good, which is important. Stress, when it comes to... Um, here's a good example. Ever bombed a test? in college or in school, and the moment you bomb it, you instantly accept it, and you just feel kind of down, but you, you, you just no longer, you don't process all the consequences it's going to have later on. That right there. Notice how the moment you get the bad grade back, you actually feel better than you did when you were waiting to get the grade back. That's that shit kicking in. That's the copium kicking in. It's a real, genuine defense mechanism that your body invokes in times of great stress or crisis. So that's the reason why sometimes big things you handle a little better than relatively little things. You know, you can obsess over tiny little issues about your appearance or like a little inconvenience or about something you have to clean. Um, but bigger stuff you can handle a little bit better. Um, I, anyway, I just, it's important to keep that in mind. Far from it. Disappointments of every variety, great and small, happen throughout life. The mature person learns from them and gets stronger each time he recovers. This- I mean, trauma is a thing? I don't think- No, that's- no, that's not true. In fact, this narrative reinforces the idea that if you are traumatized by an event or you feel bad after it, or if there are long-lasting consequences uh, to a bad thing happening to you, it's a sign of immaturity and weakness on your part. Whereas trauma is a is a uh, 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 perfectly uh, uh, valid's not the right word perfectly expected reaction to some bad things happening. This kind of mature thinking is best expressed in the famous advice given to King Solomon. What this too shall pass. Perspective also means that when okay. we are upset with someone dear to us, we have to put that negative experience in the context of the entire relationship. Immature people demonize a friend or a relative they are upset with and forget or ignore all the love and good experiences they once had. I guess this is true. Yeah, it's important to uh, maintain some context in relationships. Some people do get super fucking freaked out about like petty stuff. Uh, there, this has the potential to be valid advice without it being like abuse apologism. Mature people see the whole picture, not only the good, and not only the bad. Five, achieving deep understanding. This takes the concept of empathy to a higher level. It's used here to excuse abuse though. Um, I mean, it, it could be, yeah. Like this, this guy seems like the kind of dumb fuck you could like come in and say you're being battered by your wife or husband or something. And he'd be like, uh, well, huh. I can't help but notice they still provide for you, you know? Level. Beyond tuning into another's feelings, this is about comprehending the ways in which another's ideas and behaviors make sense to them. You don't have to agree with that person, but you need to be able to get inside their thinking. You need to understand why they believe what they believe. It's funny they say this because I have never talked to a conservative who had any fucking idea what I believe. Like, I can, I can cogently express the beliefs of my political opponents pretty easily. Because they're not that hard. You know, it's pretty simple. Have you ever talked to a conservative who accurately described your beliefs or the beliefs of, like, the Democratic Party ever once? Has that ever happened? I have never had that happen. Not even, cl not even fucking close. They always start with some 
insane shit right off the bat. Like some wild fucking, I mean, QAnon is like a growing thing. Like these people, they're, they're absolutely living in a different reality. A good way to do this is to repeat what a person has said back to them. Is this what you meant? That's, that is if true. If they say, yes, it is, then you know, and they know that you've reached a deeper understanding. That is, that is true, by the way. That's actually the only good advice I've seen so far. Yeah, that is true. Yes, that is true. You should do that for debates, too. You want to make sure you're attacking the best possible version of your opponent's arguments. So you want to ask them uh, clarifying questions. Some people recognize their beliefs are incoherent dog shit, so they actually get upset if you ask them clarifying questions. That happens a lot when I debate people, uh, especially prominent members of the skeptic community, funnily enough. It's a sneaky debate tactic where you ask them what they actually believe, rather than just letting them go off with a bunch of vague half-statements. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a good tactic. This kind of understanding, by the way, is indispensable to achieving true intimacy. It yeah. explains why the mature person is able to have more intimate relationships than the immature person ever will. I, I, I agree you should be able to understand your partner to be intimate with them, yeah. Taking control, taking responsibility, containing your emotions, having perspective, achieving deep understanding. These are five characteristics of maturity. Together, they can lead you to a deeper and happier life. We done? I'm Dr. Shut up. Free. Oh, that was stupid as shit. Holy fuck. This guy, I can't, I feel bad for whatever poor saps ended up spending uh, uh, their hard-earned money on getting care from this guy. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't say, don't be vulgar. Yeah. A good sign of maturity is uh, also, uh, you don't ever say cuss words. Also, mature people are Christians. Like, I don't know. Just throw them all in there, right? A mature person will ignore the way this guy is pronouncing mature. Ha! <laughs> Got me there. I'm getting Jordan Peterson vibes. Oh, God. Oh, my God. There are so many mediocre young men online who never connected with their fathers, who are desperately reaching out for a new one. Holy shit. I can't- Ah, they do it- They do it with Elon, Elon Musk, too. They do it with all these fucking people. Oh, God. I'm getting Jordan Peterson vibes because a stern man in his 50s or 60s with a suit looked at me and told me how I should live my life. These people are so weak. How can you simultaneously believe that it's important to be able to uh, exercise uh, autonomy over your own life and control it on your own. Um, but then also just like hardcore simp, just just get on your fucking knees and throat. Um, every authority figure who tells you how to live, it's so weak, it's weak. Are you sure they didn't mean that in a bad way? I'm relatively sure that the 1.7 thousand uh, liked YouTube comment underneath a PragerU video was not speaking ill of Jordan Peterson. I'm reasonably confident they weren't. Yeah, it's time to talk about the fatherlessness epidemic in conservative households. That's what I'm talking about, baby.